Hello, hi, um, my name is Yaya from ATDI. Um, I'm based in Sydney. Um, today I have a short video to um, introduce um, HTZ Communications or HTZ Warfare um, for the purpose of um, rail line network planning. So I want to show you how we do um, a, a, um, Tetra um, analysis for rail line. It could be LTE or any other technology, DMR, P25. So we're going to talk about uh, Tetra modeling uh, for a rail line. So let's start uh, with the tool itself. This is um, this is HTC Communications. Um, it's a civilian um, um, planning tool used for mission uh, critical planning uh, networks and also for mobile networks and microwaves and so on. Um, I wanted to talk about the basic layers that you need in such a model. So this is based. Uh, this map is based in Australia. So I'm going to um, introduce the layers. So this is a digital terrain model uh, for the area of interest. Now you may notice that this uh, terrain is made of, from multiple um, sources or multiple qualities. So the the bigger area might be a medium res uh, based on SRTM uh, one arc second, but the rail line itself could be a higher resolution. Um, it could be coming from uh, satellite uh, stereo images or from lidar uh, survey done in the area along the rail line. So usually we buffer around the rail line about one kilometer and then we we get uh, the the higher quality terrain so you can see here you capture any hills mountains uh, valleys any cuttings in in the in the mountains and bridges and so on so you can see it's a uh, this area here is high quality higher quality and the, the rest of the area is a medium quality and in fact that's good enough this is perfect for a rail line study so this is the digital terrain model that, that I have and the software um, is showing you here the longitude, the latitude and showing you the terrain, the terrain elevation above the mean sea level. And the second layer I want to talk about um, is the um, clutter. So the clutter is pretty much nothing, it's empty because this is, uh, this is desert. So if I show you the image again, so you see there's nothing, there's no vegetation, no trees, no buildings, no sign of life. Okay, so there's not much vegetation to worry about. And if there is any, it will be captured by the later uh, data. So that's why uh, we, we choose here not to have any clutter. But we, in fact, we, we established the, the buffer around the rail line just to tell that this is, um, um, this is a, rail, a rail area or the, rail, uh, um, um, the, the buffer around the rail line. So um, the rest of the layers here we have is so image like we said before, and um, you can you can look at the terrain in a different color scale. Okay, it could be a shade view uh, or it could be a color view. The color view will give you more uh, um, uh, visualization um, for for the details. So I'll go back to the to the to the terrain view and the image view here. So the second, uh, the second step in the modeling here, so you are, now you establish the, the, the different layers. The second step is the, uh, we need to model the rail line, the rail center line as a vector file. And in fact, uh, the software has the, the, the capacity to import. So we can go and import into the vector layer a shape line. So you need to get the, the, the rail line in a shape format. And this is usually very easy, straightforward. And uh, you can import it, and then you can display it in, in the software. So I already have uh, the, the, the rail line modeled. Here we go. Okay, so this is this is the rail line. It's it's modeled as a vector line. Okay. So now we have the vector line and um, we can also deploy stations. You can ask the tool to automatically deploy a station. Uh, every certain distance or based on the coverage requirements, you can do auto planning. Now, I already have a network here on the map. So this is my network. So we've got, um, we got here uh, uh, a base station every roughly uh, eight kilometers. So you can read here the distance between two stations. So from here to here is roughly um, eight kilometers in this example here. And you can set up or define the parameters for every transmitter. So here we have a Tetra. Now the software support multiple technologies. So if you're doing WiMAX, if you're doing Wi-Fi, if you're doing um, uh, LTE, 
um, any other technologies that all can be uh, modeled in the same software. Here we have transmission power, they had antenna gain, cables, connectors losses. We have here the calculator, if you know the type of the, um, of the cable, the length of the cable, the frequency you're going to use, then you can establish uh, how much attenuation you, you would expect. For example, if you say it's only going to be running for 50 meter, uh, at 450 megahertz, you double click, and then you can see here um, how much losses you have. So we already established here the cable connector losses, combiners losses, or whatever losses you have, the frequency, uh, transmission antenna height, the, the bandwidth, and here we establish the antenna. So the antenna can be selected from a library, you can import from a third party format, such as ADF, FCC, Planet, and so on. So you can easily import the antenna from the vendor. And uh, if you need to define multiple frequencies on the same transmitter, on the same station, you could. And here we can define a target for the reception, okay? Uplink and downlink. You can define a target, um, uh, what is the signal level, the minimum signal level you need. And uh, here we can define uh, uh, how many how many uh, logical channels you can have in one uh, in one tracks in one transmitter. For example, Tetra typically running on twenty five kilohertz, and in the twenty in the first twenty five kilohertz you have uh, three plus one. Three plus one means um, um, uh, means one one pilot channel or control channel, and then three traffic channels. So you can have three traffic channels and one um, pilot. Now, if you have two, if you have two channels, two transmission channels, then you would have uh, you would have uh, um, four, five, six, seven. So become seven plus one. If you have two two tracks, twenty five each, then you would have um, seven plus one. So seven uh, transmission, uh, seven traffic channels, and one pilot. So here we have the rest of the network, and then of course you can display the uh, antenna pattern if you need to. It's Omni. The old Omni is here, and you can choose to assign color. As you wish, and you can assign non-overlapping colors, and that's very important if you want to assign non-overlapping colors between stations. And you can visualize the coverage um, um, when you do the analysis. So this is my network, and uh, if you want to analyze um, um, uplink and downlink, so we're going to run run the rail uh, of the train. We're going to run the train from the south to the to the north. We're going to run the train, and then we get, we're going to analyze uplink and downlink performance. And we need to plot it, okay? There's so many functions you can use in the software for, for this kind of application. For example, we have here vector line mobile uh, to fix the station. So we're going to analyze in a point-to-point -point mode the, the, the reception and the reception quality in uplink and downlink between, uh, uh, between a, mobile, a mobile target on the rail line and, and the fixed stations. And that's exactly what we have. So you run the function and you tell the software that I'm going to analyze both uplink and downlink. You can do downlink only or uplink only. I prefer you do both, uplink and downlink study. And this option here is, um, I will use it in, in medium quality or low quality to, to clutter uh, in order to readjust uh, the position of the, of, the, um, of the receiver along the specific clutter. But in that case, we have a nice quality vector line, so I'm going to stick with it. Okay, so I choose none, and every pixel, the software will, will evaluate uplink and downlink for every single pixel. And the pixel currently is sitting on 10 meter or 5 meter resolution. Okay, so my, my pixel, every pixel is 5, 10 meter. So that's, that's perfect. So the software is going to establish the KPIs for every position. And you can specify here the, uh, the, 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 the handset or the portable receiver or the mobile receiver parameters. So I already have some parameters handy here, so I can just go and load them. I call it MS, mobile station. So you've got four, four watt transmitter, or mobile transmitter, you've got zero dBi antenna gain, it's handheld device, for example. You've got some body losses, I, I assumed here, five, five, five dB, you've got res antenna height for, for, the head, for the portable device, 1.5. Frequency, roughly the nominal frequency, and here we have the sensitivity that you need in the downing or for the handset itself. So these are all the technical parameters you can define, you can do a lot of things. Uh, I'm going to make keep it basic, and here we can establish the range. So, so the software is going to evaluate uh, the link between the handset and every, every station within 10 kilometer radius. Okay, this is very important. If you're limited to 10 kilometer, that, that means um, probably you will be able to see two stations at a given time. Now, if you want to see more, you could, okay? But then you have to extend the, ra the radius. 
Now, Propagation Models, ATBI is, um, is an excellent company when it comes to propagation models. We do not supply a third party. We, we don't need to. We, we don't rely on third party to produce uh, or supply us those propagation models. Um, we have over 30 years of the development experience, and then we are also contributing to ITU when it comes to propagation models. We've done a lot of studies, and what we, we've done a lot of correlations and uh, comparison between predictions and measurements, and we do have a lot of um, um, uh, documentation to support our statement. Okay? We have a family of propagation models we are very proud of. Uh, we call them deterministic propagation models. These are based on rules of physics. So I'm going to use DAGO 94 for the diffraction. And I'm going to use fine, fine enhanced for the, for the, uh, the, for the um, local reflections. Okay? So I'm going, to, I'm going to use a combination of propagation models. We've got, uh, we've got a, a, a free space for, for, for the cases where you have free space. And we have diffraction for when you have diffractions. And then you have reflections to, to do optimize the model and to give you more accurate predictions. So I choose my model now. I'm happy with it. Here we go. Close. And then let's run a simulation. So you see now the, the, the train is running. And in every position, the software is checking which station it can connect to. So we're going to give you a KPIs for the primary, secondary, and third um, servers that you can connect to or station you can connect to. And it's going to establish the KPIs in both uplink and downlink directions. Taking into account the base station parameters, the antenna parameters, the, the, the portable receiver parameters. Okay, that could be a cab receiver or it could be a handheld uh, device. Now, this is the basic report that we produce. So this is the best server effectively. Every best server. You see, it's different color because I have different color for every station. So you can see all the information here. Now, if you choose to get this in the report, you can zoom in, of course, and then you can see what's going on for every signal. Now, if you want to see more, more information, you can go on list. By the way, if you see here the minima here, if you click on it, then you can see where this is happening in, in, on, on, the, uh, on the map. If you go on list, then we can probably get more information and analyze a little bit further. So this is a, a nice report. Um, we can see a couple of things in that report. Okay, this is a very basic report that really sum up what's going on. Uh, the, blue, the blue curve here is downlink first. That means the primary option for the, handheld, for the handheld device, for the portable device. That's the first choice. The first choice as a signal, the blue one. So you see the blue one is the downlink signal, and you can see it's the strongest really on the map here. Now, the, the yellow, so first we spoke about the blue, that's the strongest, and here we have the yellow. The, the yellow or the, or the yellow one here, or the orange, this is yellow actually, it's the second strongest. So you can see uh, the blue is a lot higher than the second one. Okay, so the second one is also very important for me because this is my backup. That's my redundancy. So if the primary server or the primary station is faulty, had a problem, so if you have a single point of failure and then one side is down, then you know you have another option, another station to, to, to hand off to or to pick up a signal from. And that's very important. It's usually when you have a, 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 a tender, in the technical specifications, you must ask for a, a backup or redundancy plan. So you need to make sure that the second signal or the second station available for every position on the rail line is also exceeding the requirements. So what are my requirements at this stage? So if my requirement is our NEG 85, which is, bit, which is a, a, a typical requirement for a handheld device, NEG 85 will be sitting here. So you can see the blue is always above NEG 85, okay? It's always above. The blue is always above. But the orange is not, okay? So you, you can see here, you can evaluate the network if the network design is, is fulfilling the criteria. But usually for the second server, you have less, um, less tough requirement. You wouldn't ask for NEG 85. You might be asking for NEG, NEG 95, not NEG 85. All right, so this can be analyzed in, in the software, and then you can establish if you're failing, where you're failing. Okay, so we are analyzing here downlink and also uplink. The red is uplink. So you can you can analyze downlink, uplink, and also second downlink, uh, the second server for the downlink. These are all the measurements that, that we have, and you can always add more information. So you can you can you can add your own plots. So you can you can plot, for example, for the x-axis the distance traveled. You can, for the y-axis, you can downlink, you can get the uplink, uplink signal in DBM. 
you can ask for the average and then you can ask for uh, for the second best server in the uplink. So here now we are analyzing where we are adding the second best server but for the uplink for the uplink KPI. So now if I choose to add this to the plot, which you could add to the plot. Now it's being added to the plot. All right, done. So now here we go, back to the graph. Here we go. So now we have one more graph. We have the uplink power received in DBM, order number two, which means this is the second best server. So we have first best server, both downlink and uplink. We have second best server, both downlink and uplink as well. So I'm going to exit this, close it. So now we analyze point to point in a graphical way. Now we can also analyze in a in a coverage mode. For example, we can go coverage network analysis TXRX. So that will let you calculate the coverage based on the receiver height for the range of interest. So you can run the calculations like this, one by one, and then the software can run the predictions for you. I already had the predictions done previously, so here you go, that's the coverage. Now this design is very basic design, it's omni, but you might have Yagis, you might have uh, panels, you might have something more um, um, directional, depending on what you're doing. So this is the coverage, and that coverage is going down to neg 85. Uh, it, you, can, you can go and define a pellet if you want. Um, you can define a pellet, the tools, cloud options here, or uh, use a pellet. You can ask a software, here we go, um, say neg, neg 85, neg, uh, neg 75, for example, neg 65, and neg 55. Then you can go and define colors here, um, something like this. And then you can say here it's it's uh, above or equal to neg 85 dBm, above or equal to neg 75 uh, dBm, and so on. Okay, close. And now you see this is my palette applied. So the the green areas are the areas where you have st very strong signal neg 55, and then uh, the, the yellow neg 65, orange is neg 75, and so on. Now you can also ask for the best server. Control B. This is the best server. You can you can do a lot of analysis, guys. Here. Um, you can analyze uh, um, uh, best server first, best server, second best server. You can analyze uh, overlap. You can ask for the overlap. You can ask for simultaneous uh, servers. You, wanna, you can see how many servers or how many cells the, 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 the MS or mobile station can, can, can uh, detect in every position. So you can see now the colors are not overlapping colors here because that's what I defined it as, not overlapping colors. So blue, light blue, and the magenta, green, and so on. You can see this is the, the best server boundary. So the, any, 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 uh, if the train, the train position is in that green area here, so very likely will be served by this cell. When you cross over to the blue area, we'll hand over to, to that cell here. Now you can analyze handover, you can analyze a lot of things. You can export the coverage to, to Google Earth. Okay, so um, lots of functionalities in that tool, and um, um, it, it depends how you want to use it. Let me analyze here uh, point to point as well. The receiver height here, one, one, and then you can see how the tool is predicting signal. So signal is taking into account the terrain, the terrain model, calculating diffraction losses and uh, reflection losses uh, along the rail. Okay, uh, I think that's it for, for, for now. Um, I will try to put more videos on, on that topic. But for now, I wanted to give you an idea what the tool is capable of and how it can be used. Thank you for now and um, look forward to post more videos. Bye.